Hello and welcome to the Handy Capable Black Woman Throne Room. My view of humanity is a whole new tea. And I think this is going on the nerd channel. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Finally. Yeah, because well, my life keeps changing and I'm just going with the flow. But something that I've been thinking about is converting or part of my nerdiness channel it will be about my passion for advertising and marketing and how my students do not appreciate me past present future they don't appreciate all of the hard work because i teach in a very different way and i'm not going to act like i'm just so special and everything like that but I wanted to change and like my from my college experience and I had a couple professors that were kind of a little outside the box but especially since with my disability there's a learning component with the disability and so then I had to learn differently and I also realized how with technology and then with videos, people have shorter like attention spans and everything like that. And also with technology, there are now new ways where I would be able to teach my students, give them more of a scope, more of interpretation, and allow them to brainstorm and dig into things other than just the textbook and everything to the point where I had real life experiences and because the last like before COVID I was planning on creating a nonprofit segment of like for for my students their final exam would be to pick a nonprofit and then their job was with social media and with all of the items that I taught them in class was to market and advertise to raise money for this nonprofit and to give an invitation to like representatives from this nonprofit for like the last day of class they would do a presentation of ideas that they're like oh how can you spread the word about this nonprofit and how can you like resurrect like either the website or anything anything like that or who within Michigan would be good representatives for this nonprofit and that would be a good image for them to kind of go along with when it comes to image and stuff. And, but I could never do that. Well, one, COVID, but then two, oh, um, I, I'm trying to think of a way to say it nicely, but I don't really care now. Some of these students are so f lazy. They're so lazy. And some of them are so proud of being lazy. And I, I have no idea what order I'm putting out these videos. Cause, because, yeah, let's just say, like, I've already said how tough of, the, of a year this is. And that includes with technology. So it's like I'm currently in the works of getting my main laptop fixed. It was like, literally, it's like, it's not a huge, huge deal, but it's a huge deal because it's one of the main components. But anyways, it, it seems like it should be an easy fix or whatever. But yeah, anyways, sorry, tangent. But with the way that I teach, a lot of students didn't appreciate it because I just don't go by, I won't. Well, I teach the information from the textbook, but in a totally different way. I grab tons of professionals and I look for them on YouTube and I look for their seminars. I look in like all of their free information and seminars and podcasts and everything. And I and documentaries. Oh my gosh. I've mentioned it in another episode, but I don't know if it's going to be up because I'm going to be doing some major edits. but. The documentary about McDonald's and the the toy. And people don't like, if you've listened to this before, some people are like, what's the big deal? Do you realize how that took 
McDonald's from like just the the base level or just basic to now everyone is chasing them. It's like when you think fast food, McDonald's is at the top of the chain. Everyone's competing against them. They are the honchos. They are the ones that you look at. It's like with marketing and products. They are the ones that the competitors are looking at. It's like as a business, that's who you want to be. And it, the McDonald's Happy Meal and the toy got them to where it, they want to be. And there's other documentaries that I showed and shared with how the psychology of it. Because a lot of people think, oh, marketing is just billboards, commercials, and things like that. And having like a pretty face and stuff like that. It's psychology too. There's so many different things that make marketing and advertising such a beautiful, magical thing. And yes, there is a wicked evil side to it, but I don't like that. I'm not going to teach that. Like, that's another thing. I'm not, I will teach you how to not do that. I, and I will, I always try to teach you the sunshine side of it. But I, like, I show you the dark side to make sure that that you know that that is a dark side because if I don't teach you that's a dark side it's like later in life you're gonna just shrug your shoulders like I don't know yeah ask the creator of Amazon and some of these other head honchos about that huh? yeah mm, you know mm. I'll, I'll talk about Amazon once um yeah I'll, mm, <laughs> yeah let's just say that's a long story that's a long story but there's still something that some of my students don't even know that I did. And because, yeah, I told you about the one example with the nonprofits. I love nonprofit small business businesses. Like, I talk about the head honchos because I want my students to see how they became the companies they, they became. But for my workshops, for my discussions and everything like that, I always try to talk about new companies, upcoming companies, and either their struggle, what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, how they're making sure that they're unique and different and amazing from their competitors, and then also their competitors, what are their competitors doing, the pricing, the logos, and like the representation, the logistics, the budget, the who, when, where, and the the who on social media, like are they talking to people on social media? Which social media are they using? Are they using any of the bloggers or YouTubers or Instagrammers to promote their products? And like, cause even like, I'll talk a lot about books because well, I'm an author and I'm going, uh, well, I haven't really started my marketing yet because I'll talk about that in another episode, but I literally, with my story, because I did things out of order, I did things in a way where, I know it's not really typical, but at the same time, I did it in a way so at least my name will be out, and I also did it in a way because I wasn't diagnosed and some of the doctors said I might have um, cancer and I, I might die, and I before like since more and more doctors are saying it and I was scared I didn't want to die without living my dream so I published my books as quickly as I could because it's, I was like even if no one reads them or finds them at least they're up at least now I can say I'm an author but now it's like I am starting to have an audience and I do have readers and I am I was like I did get an email asking when is my next Dragon Lusty book gonna come out. It should have been out. But yeah, trying to get my novel out and now I have like quite a few novel drafted and and then my I have around eight different children's books that I need to get out and talk to my illustrator to create the artboard and then with the youtube channel and podcast and yeah it's a lot but i 
like one thing I try to teach my students, but some of the students don't understand why I do what I'm doing. You always want to cross promote. Like one mistake that a lot of authors do is they have a book out. Okay. They have a book out. Understand. They have a book out. That's it. But then they, some of them hate marketing. Some of them hate, hate promoting. Some of them don't have another business to back the product or the book off of. So yeah, you have a book. And especially those who don't want to write a series. The ones who only want have one book. Okay, yeah, you have a book. It is so extremely hard to mark it off of one book. You always need the chance and opportunity to cross promote and meet new demographics, meet new people. So either you need to create more streams of income, new product lines, and things where if you have a book and then maybe even a baseball cap company, I, mean, I said that specifically. Then when if they buy the book, you can be like, oh, and check out my custom baseball hats. And then if they buy a hat, oh, check out my book. My main character has a customized hat. And it's like, because they're born from this city. And like, just something like, I just said that the spur of my, like, yeah. But it's just an example. And it's like, a lot of students, they blew me off. But then every time I showed them a YouTuber, one of their favorite YouTubers that did just that. And I, but then I literally had to paint the picture. I had to dot the, like dot to dot with them. And some of the students saw it, they were like, oh, oh, that, that's what they did. They did exactly what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, oh, the, like see, I'm not just teaching you something just because. And... But some of the students, oh, uh -huh. so uh, I would say exactly which semester, but I'm just going to say one of my last classes, two thirds of the class was so lazy and ridiculously lazy and to the point where even reading articles and watching videos was too much for them. And to, when they came to class and I would be like, Okay, guys, did you watch the videos? Nah, play it now. With attitude. And when I said, well, you were supposed to do that at home. Well, we didn't, so play it now. And then the students who did watch it, they're sitting there like, well, the videos were only 20 to 45 minutes, and only two of the videos were required, and I want, like, some of the students watched almost all of them almost all of them and I, I never expect any of my students to watch all of them because I mean if that's your major then that's amazing yeah, yes bravo congrats but it's just amazing with how many students are so lazy they came and watch a one 20 minute video <sighs> and so like and it's funny because I find videos that yes have to do with marketing and advertising but they cross over to the different parts of marketing. Some deal with the budgeting, the finance, accounting to marketing. Because especially when you're going location, location, you have to budget and you have to realize how much of my demographics are from this state. So does it, it's like, how would this make sense of me pay, spending this much money on this state? And in which season? Breaking down by season, or if you have a new flavor coming out, or a new pro like color by see something, see like you know, either it's seasonal or whatever. But yeah, this same semester, <laughs> I my students have no idea that I had a surprise in their classroom in w one day but th the guest they thought this they thought this student was just so lazy they just showed up for one day and then dropped the class no 
this so-called student was actually one of my friends. This person was on Shark Tank. I yeah, I have network, especially since I'm an angel investor. I'm I'm a low budget like eight because I'm I especially now I have to get my life back together because of my disability nightmare and everything. But and if you listen to my other YouTube channel, Mr. No Heart. Yeah, I was working two or three jobs while he was telling me to give up and everything like that. But once I started doing research and I found out about angel investing, he kept telling me, don't waste your money, don't do this, don't do that, blah, blah, blah. But I started doing it anyway. And okay, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm gonna save. There's some information that, oh my gosh, if he ever listened to this, to my this series and this episode, he would hate me. And I would devour every crumb of that hate, every morsel of it, and drink it with a full glass of ice cold patty. Sure would, sure would. Because he told, he kept telling me not to, just like he told me to never have kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm adopting and fostering one day, and that's one reason why. There's a lot of reasons why I'm single, but. I've learned I'm never letting a man tell me what to do again. And people keep saying like, yeah, but you're supposed to be submissive to the, mm -hmm. yeah. If I had listened to all of these men that I've dated in my life, I would be nothing. I wouldn't have my three degrees or my four certifications. I would not have had the, pro like, oh, being a promotional model, I would be married now. If I had quit promotional modeling. Right, Scott? Right, Scott? <laughs> yeah. Because he threatened, like, because he didn't like that I was a promotional model, but he didn't even know what I, I invited him to come by one of my jobs to see what I do. Because I, I had a ride and drive. Because he thinks promotional modeling means that I'm in a bikini walking around or doing, like, he's stupid. He's an idiot. And that's one reason why I'm so glad I never, eat, like, I, I ended that um, relationship very proudly. And I think he was so upset, too. Oh, actually, he was furious. Because, yeah, later on in life, I think it was about a year or two later, he, yeah, I'm changing subjects or, yeah, my life's a mess, so get used to it. Yeah, this YouTube channel is just as much of a mess as my life. <laughs> but he threatened me that he, he was going to break up with me if I did not quit. So I was like, okay, break up with me. I drove up to his house to get my stuff. And my birthday was right around the corner, so... He, he thought he was real cute. He put it, my stuff in the birthday bag. And I'm like, are you stupid? Like, okay, like you're trying to be petty, but I'm, I'm like, thank you. Because you, at, you should be ashamed of yourself. It's like, yes, you're a man, but how dare you? I'm trying to control my life. But then years later, he was begging for me back while he's dating another black woman oh yeah he's white too but yeah he was begging for me back but now he has two kids and everything with this other black woman i'm so happy oh and i'm really happy because yeah his grandfather when he met me at a birthday party and he he's heard a lot about me but at the birthday party he was like i'm so glad that you met an amazing, wonderful black woman. But why can't you just settle on a decent white one? So when I found out he married another black woman, I laughed so hard. Because I was just like, I want to see your grandfather's face. I want to see how upset he is. I want to give her a high five and a thank you. Because... It's like the, the racism, the blatant racism that I had to go through. And then I passed the baton to you. 
It's like I'm glad I'm glad I'm, I'm so glad I passed the baton to because I would have probably divorced him by now because if he told me to quit promotional modeling what else was he gonna tell me to quit because I didn't even have my first masters yet so was he gonna tell me I had to quit grad school and then when he was he gonna tell me to quit grad school again when I got my second one yeah but I'm back to it. Okay. Because my students. All right, and I did this three different times. Twice as was with the same person too. But <laughs> my students don't realize who was in that classroom. Someone from Shark Tank. It was one of the people who owned the businesses. And I was going to allow them to do a business makeover and talk to the Shark Tank contestant and for them to brainstorm and also gain knowledge from this person of what they learned from it and also how they tweaked and changed their marketing because if, if you watch Shark Tank, if you listen closely, how many times is the issue marketing and advertising how many times is the issue marketing and advertising i was just watching it tonight which is one of the reasons like i was going to talk about this but when i i was sitting down watching shark tank and watching these both like it was hood baseball caps and then 3k or k3 um, the basketball, like shooting the basketball the correct way, which as someone now in a scooter, wheelchair and everything like that, it's like I'm going to buy it because I, I love playing basketball and, that, and I was really good at, well, three pointers and things like that. But I, I keep saying I want to go back out and play tennis. I want to go back and play basketball. And maybe that's like... Especially my posture would be different in a wheelchair. And so to me, it's like if I if I buy it, I would do like with her marketing and everything from a disability perspective, I would buy the product and I would love I would interview her and like I would do like a before and after. Like I would get a membership at a gym with a basketball court and everything. And I will look up like the slow days or when it's going to be slower. And then I would just practice at least two or three times a week. And so do a before and after, but show videos like maybe every other week or once a month or something like that. And then at the six month mark, it's like maybe before and after. It's like I take 20 shots and I see like how was my 20 shots before? How many of was my 20 shots after? And so this could help promote for basket like wheelchair basketball and people with disabilities but then also other people who it's like like by people like especially with cross promotion like with this channel it's like I might have some nerds that love the basketball court and I would even probably talk about some of my favorite basketball anime and different things like that and but yeah a lot of students don't realize that with a lot of businesses the reason that they fail is marketing and advertising it's not always the case because also differentiation with hood bat or baseball caps their struggle was separating them from the competition and if you've taken my class i, I highly doubt my students will be watching this but now do you see why I kept talking about branding, seasonal, creating new items, the senses, even taste buds, every, like we went through it all because marketing is following the senses, even the sense of smell, even emotions. Marketing and advertising has so much to do with everything around you and even with touch and smell and hear and like the psychology, music, wording, 
and even like with AI, I try to show them how wording changes a picture. Wording like will warp anything around and I would show them as much as I could with different types of technology. And I had one nightmare student. I'll just say he's a golfer. He was sitting right near, like, and okay, this is another thing. Because this, I know he will never watch this, but he was sitting right near this, like, because in the funny thing is, at the end of the class, because, I, like, I, him and I came to a conclusion. Or one time it was a female, but a couple of times it was a man. But, and I say him, generally, as a general, so they don't know if it was a him or her this time. But I would just say him, he, he sat in right next to this golfer. And the agreement was, once you make up your mind, if you're going to allow these students to work upon your marketing and advertising program, leave the class as if you're skipping class, as if you can't stand me or whatever. And it's like, just act like some students do. And then at the end of class, come back. Or after all the students leave, I, I texted them, letting them know. So they came back. Oh, the things they said about because yeah, my golfer he was texting the entire time, and parts of the class he was texting about me and how I'm a cripple. And my friend was like, "If he treats you like this, no, he does. This class doesn't deserve because he noticed like a lot of the students in the back they weren't." They weren't participating. They weren't following along. They were just sitting there about to go to sleep. Like, and he, he was like, it was really funny. Cause he was like, your class was engaging. And how come the people in the front of the room, they, the dialogue was great and they were tossing out ideas. And there was one, one young lady who I was like, especially from a Hispanic point of view, I was just like, hold up, wait a minute. Let me write some notes. And I'm like, yes. I was like, those are my star players are in the front too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, the right and the left front of the room, those are my star students. It's like, those are the people who participate and they listen to the videos. They listen to, they read the articles. And then throughout the semesters, things start clicking because they start connecting the documentaries about the Happy Meal and then Starbucks and the, like, the kid-friendly caffeine and it's like oh there's so much information and that's one reason why with the nerd channel all oh, i'm going to be talking in addition and it's like i'm going to i'm going to talk about the wendy's pricing thing because they try to change the wendy's prices but my students don't they don't work hard enough to enjoy these experiences i'm gonna have a part two of it but each time my stu my well my fake my faux students came back or my friend, they were like, nah. They they don't work. They're not gonna work. Like and it's like he, oh the way they talked about golfer. Mm, the way they talked about golfer. That that alone let me know to never mm -mm, no, not for this class. Because there was even gonna be a well, I'll continue it on the next episode. But this is the Handy Capable Black Nerd channel. My view of the world is a whole new tea. And I'm gonna try to think of a new unique because this I know that was a little different. But I, I yeah, I wanna think of something nerdy, but at the same time petty for this channel. But just know that I'm human and you're human too and we're all nerds together so oh i'm so excited but yeah us nerds gotta stick together much love and appreciation bye